Hey everyone, uh, this is my third time trying to record this. The first two times uh, didn't work out, so let's hope the third time's the charm. Uh, this is a video that I've been wanting to do uh, about Grupo Televisa. I've got a position in it, uh, about 4% of my portfolio. I, um, and I just wanted to walk through my thinking on it, uh, not because uh, I'm asking other people to invest in it or not invest in it, just the opposite. Uh, this is the disclaimer part. Uh, this isn't investment advice. You should do your own work. Uh, I'm not here to give you advice and you shouldn't be here to take advice. I'm not a professional investor. I just invest my own money and I do this for education and entertainment purposes only. Um, I like to keep contemporaneous thoughts of uh, my I like to keep uh, contemporaneous thoughts of my um, process so that uh, I can look back on that later and see if I was right about uh, my thesis or if I was wrong and where I was wrong. Uh, I don't like to uh, buy something and then suffer from thesis creep where the story changes and then you sort of talk yourself into why you shouldn't sell because uh, you know now this is a, another reason to own it. So generally I like to uh, you know print out a little one page thing from um, value line and write my notes on the back. And uh, I couldn't find one for uh, Televisa, which is fine. I did read the 400 page 20F and I looked at the uh, presentations and a lot of other things to get comfortable with it. Uh, so that's just part of my process. And uh, you know, your process is whatever it is to make you comfortable in buying Google or Amazon or anything else you're you're looking to invest in, and you should stay within your circle of confidence. Um, so in a past life, I uh, represented cable companies in, at a, a law firm uh, doing M&A deals. That's why uh, I feel more comfortable with a, a cable company, even a foreign one, than I would uh, investing in some other type of company overseas. Uh, or even a pharmaceutical company in the US. It's, it's uh, something that's inside my circle of competence versus something that's outside of my circle of competence. Uh, so generally I've avoided cable companies because as a former cable attorney, you know, I, I just always thought it was a terrible business. Uh, even if you look at some of the people that have become billionaires in this business and are legends like uh, John Malone or uh, Hendrix, uh, the guy who started Discovery. Uh, if you read their books, you see that uh, you know, each of them has had times where it looked like uh, their company was going to go under and uh, they just narrowly escaped bankruptcy. So it's something that uh, it's always uh, an industry that's uh, had a lot of debt and a lot of bankruptcies. And uh, it's very exciting. You can make a lot of money, but I've tended to avoid it. Uh, however, over the past 20 years, uh, the industry has consolidated. People have paid down debt. Um, uh, cable is much more widespread because uh, now everyone pretty much has cable. Uh, if not for the entertainment, then uh, as a source of uh, internet connectivity. Uh, so, you know, it's uh, it's matured and become something that's investable uh, lately, especially, uh, you know, Charter and Comcast and some of these other companies uh, were cut in half. So I decided to take a fresh look and I was looking at um, Charter and I was commented to a friend of mine, Gobi, who is a professional investor. I said, you know, I, I'm looking at Charter. Uh, this is starting to look good. And uh, he mentioned, uh, if you like that, you should take a look at uh, Grupo Televisa. And, you know, he was right. And I saw uh, something that to me looked like uh, looked very cheap. Uh, and generally when you see something that's really cheap, uh, there's a reason that's cheap. It's got some hair on it. Um, this has a couple of things that we can talk about why it's cheap. And, you know, I, I think this value sort of hidden. So, uh, with the John Malone uh, cable entities like uh, Liberty, Liberty Global, Liberty Latin America, uh, they tend to have um, a complex conglomerate structure with a lot of cross ownership and, and stuff like that, which a lot of people don't like, and it keeps them from uh, investing in these companies. But you know, generally, uh, he does it that way to for tax purposes or uh, you know to buy things when they're cheap in one company through another company, sort of this nesting doll approach that Warren Buffett used to use with uh, blue chip stamps and Berkshire Hathaway and uh, Wesco. 
so I think uh, you see some of that here in terms of uh, you have Grupo Televisa and then you have this entity called Univision, which is 45% uh, owned by them. Uh, but in my mind, I think, uh, you know, that's great because uh, most people will do the work to figure out what something is worth and uh, that's an opportunity for you. And uh, in my thinking, um, you know, there is uh, debt, you know, usually I like companies that are debt free. There's fierce competition that's usually not good. Uh, but, you know, I think there's enough value there that I felt comfortable with, uh, especially as a former cable attorney. Uh, when I looked through the 20F, uh, I noticed that the uh, law regulating cable in Mexico, uh, similar to the U.S. law, so they have the same features, but with regard to uh, must carry and retransmit stations, and uh, that, that won't mean much to most of you, but uh, just, you know, in, in my mind, I think uh, it's very similar to the U.S., which, um, you know, if I was looking at a cable company in Europe, say, or Africa, or, you know, it, it might not have the same characteristics, but this uh, um, brought me some comfort that, um, you know, it, it was similar. So, again, not investment advice. This is just um, what I was looking at and, you know, why I, I felt comfortable with it, where I wouldn't feel comfortable investing in a, um, like a Mexican cement company or a Brazilian oil company, you know, but a, a cable company in pretty much uh, any country uh, I'm more comfortable with uh, just due to my background. So uh, I mentioned uh, it's got uh, some hidden assets and uh, that's probably one of the reasons for the price discount. Uh, another reason is that it's it's foreign, it's in another country, and generally you'll find that uh, when you're investing overseas, you can buy the same thing that you would buy in the U.S. Uh, for a lot cheaper. And part of that is um, you know the currency risk, and another part is Americans just are very parochial and they don't like to look very far beyond their nose. Uh, but sometimes you know that opens up opportunities. So uh, if you were to invest in a uh, Coke bottler in the U.S. Uh, you're probably going to pay a very high price, but uh, if you look at a Coke bottler in Argentina or a Coke bottler in Turkey or a Coke bot bottler in India, uh, you might get some bargains there. So um, uh, one of the things I liked about this is that uh, um, aside from the foreign currency risk, uh, they, they own a big asset in the U.S. called Univision, Univision if you're Latin. Uh, and this is in Miami, and the revenue that they get is in U.S. dollars. Uh, so for that part of the equation, you know, the risk about foreign currency and stuff doesn't apply. Uh, so Univision uh, is the largest uh, um, channel for uh, Spanish-speaking audiences in the U.S. Uh, Televisa is a distant second. Uh, recently, Televisa has gotten better, and uh, in a couple of time slots, uh, they've managed to beat Univision, but, uh, you know, this is rare, you know, in, in the 30 years that this fight has been going on, it, it wasn't even a fair fight. Univision, Univision would beat Televisa all the time in every time slot, but uh, uh, Televisa has managed to get a little better, but I think uh, uh, Univision has is, is still got the lead. So uh, uh, Televisa used to own part of Univision, and they actually started and were forced to divest it because of the uh, FCC rules against foreign ownership. And uh, eventually they were able to buy minority stakes and build it up. And uh, recently uh, they topped up their percentage amount by giving them uh, their content. Uh, so a lot of the content that uh, Grupo Televisa produces in Mexico, uh, Spanish soap operas they gave to uh, Univision and uh, yeah, in exchange four billion dollars in stock and cash. Uh, so most of the content, uh, entertainment content in Latin America is produced in Mexico, just like most of the um, content for uh, English-speaking audiences is is produced in the U.S. Uh, in California, so you might be in Australia, in England, uh, but really, uh, Hollywood produces most of the English language content and Mexico produces most of the Spanish language content. If you think about what an advantage that is, uh, Hispanics are the uh, 
if you're getting content in the U.S. and somebody wants to compete with you, uh, they wouldn't be able to do it in the U.S. because you'd have this huge price advantage with regard to uh, producing the content. So that's one thing. Uh, so I mentioned um, Grupo Televisa gave them several hundred thousand hours of content uh, and in exchange for four billion U.S. dollars uh, in cash and stock and uh, that brought Grupo Televisa's ownership of Univision up to uh, 45%. Um, and hold on a second here, check the whole screen. Uh, so the last time Univision changed hands was in 2006, and uh, the price that was paid was uh, 13.7 billion plus debt, uh, which brought that up to 15.1 billion and uh, 15.1 billion in 2006. Uh, if you use today's dollars, that would be equivalent to uh, $22 billion. Uh, so 22 billion plus 4 billion for the content that uh, we, uh, Televisa just forked over, that gets you to $26 billion. And uh, Univis, uh, sorry, Grupo Televisa owns 45% of Univision. So if you take 26 billion and divide it by two, uh, you get 13 billion. And if we look at the uh, valuation of um, Grupo Televisa, uh, what you get is uh, the market has 3 billion, and then when you add the debt, you get 6 billion. Uh, so again, as I said, if it's 26 billion and then you cut that in half and you get 13 billion, um, even if they overpay the assets uh, by twice as much, uh, it looks to me, you can make an argument that you're getting uh, a good deal uh, just by buying uh, Grupo Televisa and uh, if you only got uh, the Univision assets, it seems like it would be a fair price. Because again, um, uh, half, of 20, half of 26 is 13, and uh, another half of that, uh, I, I think 6.6 .6 billion when you take the market cap plus the debt, uh, that's a pretty good deal. Uh, so what does Univision own? Uh, Univision owns, um, as I said, it's a, a TV station uh, all across the US, a channel, it's on your cable, you probably don't watch it if you don't speak Spanish, but uh, the two big Latin American uh, channels are uh, Univision, which is number one uh, in most time slots, and uh, Televisa. And recently Univision uh, launched a streaming app. Um, so there's lots of people launching streaming apps uh, besides the big ones, Amazon and Hulu and Netflix and Disney. Uh, you know, you got stars with a Z, CNBC, uh, Showtime. Uh, they all have their own, and they're all struggling for market share. But those are all English language streaming apps. Uh, and if you want to think about a the potential of a Spanish language streaming app that's uh, in the U.S., it's it's targeting the 20% of the population that's fast growing, and uh, revenue comes in dollars. That seems like a pretty good deal. Uh, so. They did buy a existing uh, Spanish language streaming service called Pantaya for $100 million that had 3 million users. Uh, and the reason they bought that was they wanted to use the IP and the, and the workers and the, the knowledge base there to sort of uh, help them develop their own app, which they did. And they launched an app called VIX, VIX. And uh, as I said, they bought Pantaya for $100 million. It had 3 million users, but they mostly bought it for the IP. And in less than six months, VIX, V-I-X, already has 25 million users. Uh, so it's generally in the US, but uh, I think that this has worldwide potential because uh, if you're looking at the investments that other companies are making in cable uh, in Latin America, so you know, you've got Grupo Televisa in Mexico. Uh, there's a competitor there called Mega Cable. Uh, there's a competitor in uh, Chile <coughs> that's owned by John Malone's group, uh, Libby Latin America, and in uh, several other Latin American countries, there's a group called Tigo Millicom, and they're all building out uh, fiber and capacity. But uh, when you think about that, uh, 
no matter who you get for your cable, no matter who you get for your internet, if you've got a streaming platform, uh, you can sort of get revenue from anywhere. And I think that's a potential for this because if you've got a streaming service that can work anywhere in the world, uh, you need to fill it with content and now they have the content. So, you know, I think this has uh, got great potential. Um, so this, uh, I have a pretty concentrated portfolio. So, uh, you know, a quarter of it is Berkshire. Uh, if you add the two types of Google, that's a, another 25%. And then 10% uh, St. Joe. So uh, this says 3%, uh, but it's actually probably like four and a half because I've added to it recently. Um, on the dips, I keep adding to it. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of dumpster diving on this. And if you look at other things like price to sales, uh, it's uh, it's uh, trading at less than one time sales. Uh, it's trading at half of book. And if you look at uh, enterprise value to EBITDA, I usually like to see something less than 10 there. And this is actually less than one, which is ridiculous. Uh, so there's, I think there's a lot of value there. Uh, so why is this uh, stock sort of uh, better now? Um, if you look at this, uh, it, uh, let me go down here. In 2018, it was 20, uh, and it's gone all the way down to five now. So around about here where it was like a 10 or 12, uh, there was, uh, before it got cut in half again, uh, there was talk about a merger that was proposed between uh, these guys and the other big cable operator in uh, Mexico called Mega Cable. And uh, Mega Cable said, no, we want to do our own thing. And that's when the stock uh, went sort of from, uh, let's see, when we started it kind of done with them to, to half. And we'll look at something here. Uh, so, So if you look at this, uh, this was a from the pitch deck where um, Televisa wanted to convince uh, Mega Cabla's uh, shareholders and their management to do this deal. Uh, and if you look at them combined, it would be 41% uh, of Mexico. And uh, the dark boots are uh, Televisa's. Uh, municipalities where they have uh, operations and then the light blue ones are Mega Cable and you'll see that uh, they only overlap in 17 uh, cities so uh, this looks like it would have been a really good deal uh, because uh, yeah uh, no overlap but Mega Cable rejected this and they said you know they wanted to do their own thing and uh, if they decide to compete and overbuild uh, in some of the cities that uh, Televisa operates in, then you know that could be problematic because you're spending a lot of money. And uh, when generally when there's an overbuilder, uh, it's it's bad on profits. Uh, so generally, if there's one uh, company operating in a city it makes a lot of money, and then somebody overbuilds it, and then uh, nobody makes money. Uh, so that's the the fear I think, and why the stock has been cut in half. But anyway, um, as I said, just on the, uh, the potential of the U.S. assets, uh, I think it's pretty promising. Um, and uh, what was I going to show here? Oh, so just in uh, terms of uh, valuation, I mentioned uh, the value of uh, Unijon, and I, I thought this would... Uh, take care of the price of uh, that you're paying for the whole company. Uh, but, you know, if you just think about the Mexican assets, uh, it would take a long time to go through the whole thing. But uh, uh, something to think about, uh, they have about 4,000 um, cable subscribers in Mexico. Uh, generally, uh, when I did cable stuff, uh, people were overpaying for uh, Acquisitions and they were valuing at ten thousand dollars a subscriber. Uh, now it's about seven uh, for the really shitty uh, cable companies. You might get forty five hundred, uh, but even if you uh, put a much lower value on that, I, I think you still get a good price on this. So uh, back in the eighties, um, before there was uh, cable and uh, sorry, before there was internet, uh, they they were paying about a thousand dollars subscriber in the U.S. 
And if you look at the GDP of Mexico now, it's about what it was in the U.S. in the 80s. Uh, so if you apply that valuation to four, th 4 million subscribers, you get uh, another 4 billion in value. Uh, that's on top of whatever Univision is worth. Uh, and if you look at just the CapEx for this year and the past four years, the five years, uh, about $5 billion worth of CapEx uh, for their cable systems to upgrade and, and things like that. So even if you just look at that value, uh, that, that gets you to $5 billion for their cable. Uh, so somewhere between 4 and $5 billion, depending on how you value it. Uh, and then you've got uh, the soccer stadium. You've got a, um, a soccer team. Uh, so the um, Washington Commanders recently sold for $6 billion, uh, and that's in Washington, D.C., which is the capital of the U.S. So if that's $6 billion, um, what's a soccer team in the capital of Mexico worth? I don't know. Uh, what if it's one-tenth of that? That's $600 million. Uh, the Nationals Stadium was the most recent stadium built in Washington, D.C. It was over budget, but about $600 million. Uh, what's a stadium in the capital of, of Mexico worth versus the capital of, of, of uh, the United States? But if it's one-tenth of that, that gets you another $60 million. Uh, they also have uh, radio printing uh, and a service that uh, delivers a satellite TV, uh, which is shrinking, uh, just like the ones in the U.S., but uh, it's still profitable. So um, I'm not going to go through and value all those things because uh, I, I don't even know if this thing is recording again uh, or if I'm going to give up on this. But, uh, you know, I, I feel like there's a lot of value there. And again, uh, this isn't a recommendation to buy or sell. This is just me walking through my process uh, and how I like to look at things and, and sort of um, stay within my circle of competence and look for things that uh, look ridiculously cheap. And when they are ridiculously cheap, usually there's uh, hair on it. And hair in this case, uh, you know, you, you've got this conglomerate thing with hidden assets. Uh, you've got a stubborn competitor who should have taken the deal and merged with you, but now uh, they're committed to spending a lot of money, which might uh, force you to have to spend a lot of money. Uh, and you've got uh, foreign currency risk and all that. Um, so again, uh, it's, it's very seldom that, um, you know, it's firing on all cylinders and, and it's cheap. Uh, you know, you sort of uh, have to think about five years out where this is going to be or uh, buy it so cheap that, um, you know, you think you'll do okay. So, uh, you know, they have announced that they're going to uh, spin off the soccer team and the stadium uh, before the World Cups so that they won't have to do uh, CapEx to refurbish the stadium. But, uh, you know, if you think about, well, what if they uh, broke this company up and uh, just decided to sell off all the parts? Uh, you know, as I said, I, I, I'm pretty convinced myself that I would be willing to pay this price uh, for the Univision assets. And then, you know, I think if you sold the soccer team and the stadium and the uh, radio stations and the printing and the uh, satellite thing, uh, I, I think you'd come out with a de decent price. So uh, I feel comfortable with this. Uh, if this is outside of your area of expertise, your circle of competence, you know, you don't uh, know a lot about cable companies, move on to the next one. You don't want to invest in a foreign country, move on to the next one. Um, you know, and I, this is just, uh, as I said, me making contemporaneous record of, of things that I'm doing so that I can refer back to it later. And, uh, you know, I'm putting it out there for educational and uh, informational purposes only. Uh, you know, this is uh, uh, a way of me keeping myself honest and learning in public uh, as opposed to, you know, just making them buy sell decisions and justifying it after the fact. And, uh, you know, if I put this out there and there's something I haven't thought about, uh, I think about it and you know, it helps me with my process. So anyway, uh, hope you enjoyed it and uh, like and subscribe so you'll see uh, further updates. Thank you.